Okay, this makes just about five cups of, uh, so you could probably get um, five of these little um, half pint jars uh, of it. If you want to dress it up a little bit, um, a, one, a five and a half inch diameter circle um, of, of whatever, some cute fabric. It would be really cute if you could get something kind of a citrusy print. Um, but anything, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll dress that up a little bit. I've got four, four cups in, my, in, in our recycled uh, Nestle tea and then, and then the one in that. And then there's a little dab left over for a couple more cups for me tonight. So I hope that you will enjoy this. And uh, if, if you liked it, uh, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. And uh, check out uh, our other ones. I'm fixing to make chai tea and I just finished making a Creole coffee mix. Thanks. Hello, welcome to Pecan Corner. I'm Tina, and uh, today I'm making some chai tea mix. I'm going to start by making some vanilla sugar. Oh my goodness. I went off and left my vanilla over here. Now I have to rummage around and find it. Okay. <laughs> now then, uh, vanilla sugar is just sugar mixed with um, mixed with vanilla extract, or or that you have stored um, a vanilla bean in. Um, eventually, if you leave a vanilla bean sitting in your sugar, uh, eventually it'll permeate. The flavor will permeate the uh, the sugar. But I haven't done that, so I'm going to mix it with. Uh, my recipe here. How much sugar am I going to need? Okay. All right. I'm going to do a cup and a half of sugar. Find my little half cup on. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to do two teaspoons of. Uh, a vanilla extract. You want real vanilla extract, pure vanilla. I had a cousin when I was growing up that used to use vanilla extract as her perfume. She just kept a bottle in her room and, and uh, applied it just like perfume. <laughs> so. That was a, it, it's, it's got a lovely, lovely fragrance in it, and it's quite lasting actually. So there's another tip for a nice, a nice scent. And it's especially good for young, young girls and young women. It's very, very clean and wholesome smell. You just mix it with a fork. You could do a bigger, use a bigger bowl so you don't have to worry about mixing it out. And then just set it aside until it is dry. Um, let me go ahead and pour it into this bigger bowl because I want it to, I want it to be spread out so that it will dry quickly because I want to come back in a little while and finish this. So I'm just going to spread this all out there. And let that, uh, let that sit there, and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now then. Oops. Okay. Now I'm really back. <laughs> Alright, I've got my vanilla sugar. And if you don't like vanilla in your chai, uh, you don't have to use that. You can just skip that, uh, that point. Um, I'm going to use also, um, I used one and a half cups of sugar. I'm also going to use one and a half cups of instant tea. So I'm going to have equal amounts of both the sugar and the tea. Um, you can also make this without any sugar if you prefer your chai unsweetened. I actually uh, drink mine usually without any sugar at all in it. 
but I am putting some in this because most most people do like a, a small amount of sweetener in there in theirs. But it's actually if you have somebody on your gift list who can't have sugar, rather than use something artificial, get them to try it without um, with, without any sweetener, and they might be pleasantly surprised. Today I made my my uh, my chili, my Texas red. The, the recipe's on my on my page. Although this time I made it with um, um with ground meat instead of chopped meat because I wanted to make enough to can. So I forgot to film the canning part. But I'll let you <laughs> let y'all know how it turns out. So I'm using a cup and a half here of. Um, Of instant tea. You can use um, you can use decaf too if you prefer. Right. And stir it with a, a whisk is a real good uh, thing for stirring these powders up with. And if you're bothered by powdery substances with your breathing, you might want to wear whew, you might want to wear a. Um, a dust mask when you do this because they're all that loose. Okay, now then I'm going to do two teaspoons of ground ginger. I just realized I'm wearing a white top and I forgot to put my apron on a while ago. Well, yeah, it's probably too late now. Okay, there's one. And there's two. One teaspoon of cloves. One teaspoon of allspice. And my favorite, favorite, favorite. I love chai partly because it gives me opportunity to use cardamom. Oh, cardamom is one of my favorite, favorite spices. Um, a teaspoon of cardamom in the regular mix, but not everybody loves it as much as I do. When I make it for myself, I use two teaspoons. But uh, for just just because so many people don't, um, we'll. Uh, and we're going to do a, a quarter teaspoon of. Uh, let me get my teaspoon measure so I can do it right. Um, okay, quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And that does does really add a nice little note to uh, to the tea. You don't want too much because you don't want to overpower it. I'm also going to add some nutmeg. And that makes I buy, I buy whole nutmegs. Long time ago, in a gourmet food shop, I bought this uh, container of them, and now I long ago used those up. But now I just buy whole nutmegs. I buy um, Bolner's Fiesta brands whole whole nutmegs, and uh, uh, and just store them in this because they're they're easy to get to. I have a nutmeg grater that I bought eons ago at at Pier One, and uh, that's all I use this for. Is uh, I have discovered that if I grate it until it's about filled up like that, that's about a half a teaspoon. So I'll do that twice to get a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Oh, the fresh ground stuff is just, once you try this, you will never go back to that boring old uh, already ground up. Uh, stuff that they pass off. It's almost Urzok's nutmeg. It's so different. <laughs> I don't have fresh ginger, but I, I, uh, I, 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 I should keep some in the freezer and grate it as needed too. Of course, for this kind of a mix, you don't want that. But uh, um, I know it's much better for you. Okay. Okay, so that's a teaspoon of um, grated nutmeg, 
And since I, this is the only thing I use it for, I don't even wash it anymore. And besides that, well, I have a nice smell of nutmeg in the bowl. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to mix these all up together. Now, if you, um, if, if the person that you're making this for, if, if you don't know whether they can eat dairy or not, you could just mix this just like it is and uh, have them add a, 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 about, probably about two teaspoons, two to three teaspoons per cup. I'm going to say two teaspoons to, to a mug of, of whatever their hot milk is, whether it's almond milk or soy milk or cow's milk or goat's milk or, or whatever they use. Um, you can also do it that way and put it in smaller jars and that saves you some money in the preparation because you're not having to buy expensive powdered milk or expensive uh, uh, powdered creamer uh, to go into it. And just whatever, uh, whatever works best uh, for you. So at this stage, this is the stage at which, where you would stop um, if you were mixing it up to sell to, uh, to people that might have uh, different kinds of dairy uh, preferences and, and needs or as a gift to, to those kinds of folks. And you put it, of course, in a little smaller jar, uh, maybe even a, a small spice jar or the little um, the little half-half pints like I use... Uh, I don't have one handy, but you know they're they're uh, uh, a little tiny cannon jar, and that, that, that would work really well uh, for this. Um, but I'm going to continue on and do um, a cup full of powdered milk. You know, in the old days, before food stamps, the government gave out commodities, and one of the things that they gave was, was uh, powdered milk. And it was great because people didn't have to worry about it spoiling, and they could do all kinds of things with it. They also gave out canned milk, and, uh, and uh, uh, butter, and cheese, along with dried beans, and dried corn, and I mean, uh, dried cornmeal, and uh, uh, corn syrup and peanut butter and and all the foods that, that were given in food in government sponsored food programs were incredibly healthy foods and there were foods that didn't go bad so people could keep them and store them until they needed uh, to cook them um, so you had really good nutrition coming into households from those government programs the uh, the farm subsidies worked the way they worked then was farmers didn't just get a price support what they got was the government actually bought these excess products uh, pork there was canned uh, and the gov government would can pork and canned chicken and, and those went into those food programs too and so the farmers would grow these products and and they would sell the excess to the government the government would then um, use local and um, uh, American pr uh, processing uh, companies to process those foods for them. And then all of that would go into our feeding program so that um, poor people had access to real, healthy, uh, pure, unadulterated food that they could cook any way they wanted to cook it. And um, it wasn't, you know, there was no way to have um, um, to have fraud or, or waste in such a program because, um, you know, nobody was gonna. <laughs> you, you couldn't convert that, uh, that that butter and cheese into into money um, like you can uh, food stamps. So um, it was a it was a really good program, and it's a shame that we don't have that anymore. Okay, now I'm going to add uh, two cups of um, powdered creamer. You can use your favorite brand. I, I bought Coffee Mate because I liked the canister and I wanted to have the canister uh, for 
something else in the future to put into my pantry with maybe cornmeal in it or something. Okay. Now then, this is, um, you can make this with water or you can make it with your own hot milk. Um, if you make it with your own hot milk, it's going to be a lot richer, of course. But even just maybe with water, it's going to be very good. Hold on, I'll pick up some and show you. All right, this um, this you want to use two full tablespoons uh, to one measuring cup of boiling water, uh, which means that the um, if you're going to you'd only get about eight servings out of one of the little half pint jars. So I would. I would like to package this. I think for my purposes, I will package this product in my uh, pint jars um, so that they'll get um, a good 16 servings out of it. If you're only making it without the the creamer, without the. By the way, you can taste the powdered milk in this. So if you don't like that flavor, just stick to a full 100% creamer or Again, um, don't mix any of the, the milk and, and, and uh, creamer with it and just pack it, you know, prepare it as is and then add it to your own hot milk of whatever kind you like. Um, so for the, for, so that, that, uh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> this will give you probably about, um, well, we'll see here how much. I'm going to go package it up and then we'll see how much we're getting out of it. Looks like we're probably going to get about about six cupfuls out of it. So, Okay, I have, uh, I have some uh, wide mouth jars, that uh, pint jars, and I don't really use wide mouth jars that much, especially not the pints. Um, so that's a great thing to do with this because it'd be easy to, uh, it'll be easy for people to scoop out of it. Um, looks like I'm going to get, like I said, I'm just going to get at least about six and a half uh, cups um, out of this. So that this this recipe will make uh, will make three pints um, of the finished product, and you can uh, package it up, add your little uh, you know little. Uh, little square or circle of, uh, of gingham or, or some cute fabric that you did. And, uh, and there you go. All right, I hope that you will uh, enjoy this and uh, have, a, have a, a, a fun Christmas season making up things uh, for your gifts in your own home. Thank you. Bye.